Dear friends, welcome to a personalized episode of Enlighten Me. Today we will explore Tesla's Model Y pricing, Fiat's 500e reintroduction, and Hyundai's latest city-friendly EV, along with a look at the challenges in EV adoption and the future of extreme e-racing. Additionally, we will discuss the impact of Chinese EVs in Thailand, the Biden-Trump debate on climate, rising electricity demand, light pollution awareness, fossil fuel inefficiencies, skepticism around carbon capture, and a manganese discovery in Japan. The first Biden-Trump debate largely ignored the climate crisis, focusing instead on economic, foreign relations, and immigration policies. Moderators Tapper and Bash were criticized for letting Trump sidestep questions and offer misleading claims about his environmental record. Trump boasted about immaculate water and air, while his administration had rolled back numerous environmental protections. He criticized the Green New Deal without substantive data and pledged to undo Biden's climate policies for fossil fuel industry support. Biden highlighted his climate initiatives, including the Inflation Reduction Act, rejoining the Paris Agreement, and establishing the American Climate Corps. The debate missed in-depth discussions on Biden's extensive climate actions, such as new fuel economy standards, coal plant regulations, and substantial federal investments in sustainable infrastructure. Commercial electricity demand in the U.S. has surged, particularly in states with rapid development of large computing facilities like data centers. From 2019 to 2023, commercial electricity sales increased by 14 billion kilowatt-hours in Virginia and 13 billion kilowatt-hours in Texas. The combined growth in the top 10 states totaled 42 billion kilowatt-hours, representing a 10% rise, while the other 40 states saw a 3% decline. North Dakota led in relative growth at 37%. Forecasts predict continued increases, particularly in the South Atlantic and West-South Central divisions, with national growth expected to be 3% in 2024 and 1% in 2025. Colorado Governor Jared Polis has declared Dark Sky Month to raise awareness about light pollution's adverse effects on people, animals, and plants. The initiative is symbolic, not legal, aiming to highlight the importance of conserving dark skies. Polis points out that dark skies enhance natural beauty and are essential for health. Excessive artificial light can cause hormone imbalances and sleep issues, leading to serious health problems. Animals also suffer from disorientation and increased predation. Dark skies attract tourism, benefiting Colorado economically. The proclamation suggests practical measures for reducing light pollution, such as using lights only when necessary, directing them appropriately, and opting for warmer colors. Although more concrete actions are needed, this initiative is a positive step toward addressing light pollution. RMI, formerly Rocky Mountain Institute, highlights that nearly two-thirds of energy from coal, oil, and methane is wasted annually, amounting to over $4.6 trillion, or 5% of global GDP. This inefficiency is driven by fossil fuel production, transportation, and use, wasting around 400 exajoules primarily as heat. Fossil fuel power plants and internal combustion engines are major culprits. This waste creates vulnerability to more efficient alternatives like electric vehicles, heat pumps, and renewable energy sources. New trends. Renewable electricity, localization, and electrification are poised to drastically reduce energy waste and phase out fossil fuels. Simon Fraser University professor Sammy Khan invited me to speak to his students about carbon capture, utilization, and sequestration, CCUS. Khan's sustainable engineering program addresses environmental challenges through innovative technologies. However, I remain skeptical about CCUS, viewing it as an inefficient distraction. The largest market for CO2 is enhanced oil recovery which ironically increases overall CO2 emissions. 
mechanical direct air capture requires immense infrastructure and energy, making it impractical. Similarly, ocean-based geoengineering solutions face significant logistical and ecological challenges. Projects like Iceland's direct air capture and various U.S. initiatives remain expensive and ineffective at scale. Additionally, CO2 pipeline safety concerns, exemplified by a 2020 incident in Satarsia, Mississippi, pose significant risks. Ultimately, nature-based solutions and avoiding emissions are more effective and sustainable than current CCUS approaches. Let's now switch to the advancements in graphene. Japanese researchers have discovered a massive manganese nodule cache within Japan's exclusive economic zone, potentially impacting electric vehicle, EV, battery sustainability. Located off Minami Torishima Island, the nodules lie at a depth of 5,500 meters and contain 230 million tons of manganese, cobalt, and nickel. Large-scale nodule harvesting could begin as early as 2025, aiming for 2,500 tons daily. However, deep-sea mining poses significant environmental risks, including marine life disruption and sediment disturbance. This discovery underscores the growing demand for manganese and EV batteries, as sales and new battery formulas push global demand. Sustainable alternatives and battery recycling markets are increasingly important to mitigate environmental impacts. And now, pivot our discussion towards automotive news. Tesla's Model Y is now significantly cheaper compared to its competitors in the US. The high-end Model Y starts at $51,490, while the Audi Q5, BMW X4 and Jeep Grand Cherokee start at $57,700, $79,100, and $67,040, respectively. Factoring in the $7,500 federal EV tax credit, the Model Y's effective cost drops to $43,990. In comparison, the low-end Model Y costs $37,490 cheaper than the Audi Q5 at $45,300 and BMW X4 at $55,000. Even without considering long-term fuel savings, the Model Y offers a compelling price advantage, driving smoother and being quicker than its competitors. In 2024, Fiat reintroduces the 500e to the United States, maintaining its signature cuteness. Despite the 500E's perceived premium status, it features some cheap-feeling materials and a questionable user interface. However, its charm remains undeniable. The electric motor delivers instant torque for city driving, although power tapers off beyond 30 meters. With a range of 149 miles and 85 kilowatts of DC charging, it's practical for metropolitan use. While not competing directly with models like the Hyundai Kona EV or Tesla Model 3, the 500e targets those who prioritize style and head-turning aesthetics over functionality, capturing a unique niche in the market. Hyundai has unveiled its new Instar electric vehicle, aimed at urban drivers seeking compact, maneuverable cars with practical load-hauling features. Despite its innovative design, including bi-directional charging and the use of recycled and bio-based materials, the Instar will not be available in the U.S. The focus on sustainability extends beyond emissions, incorporating recycled paint and materials from waste tires and sugarcane. This aligns with a broader trend towards smaller, more practical vehicles, especially among women buyers. However, U.S. automakers still emphasize larger vehicles, though trends suggest growing interest in compact models. A 2024 study by the Associated Press, Nork Center, and Energy Policy Institute reveals that high prices and limited charging infrastructure hinder electric vehicle EV adoption. This aligns with General Motors, GM revised EV production forecast, now targeting $200,000, 250,000 EVs for 2024, down from 400,000 due to slower demand. 
Only 9% of U.S. drivers currently own an EV, with 40% somewhat likely to consider one for their next vehicle. Cost and range anxiety remain significant concerns. GM aims for a fully electric lineup by 2035, focusing on innovation, expanding EV production, and enhancing sustainability, while acknowledging the transition will take decades. Extreme E, founded by Alejandro Agag, is transitioning into Extreme H, focusing on green hydrogen and fuel cells. The new series aims to showcase innovations in fuel cell mobility, aligning with Agag's vision of sustainable racing. Formula E, launched in 2013, initially utilized battery swapping, but later moved to higher capacity batteries. Extreme E, which began in 2018, incorporated hydrogen fuel cells for off-grid battery charging. Extreme H will further this by emphasizing hydrogen as a sustainable energy source and continuing support for women drivers. The cost of green hydrogen is decreasing, but still higher than conventional hydrogen. Major stakeholders like Siemens and Geopura are involved in the growing green hydrogen supply chain. Join us as we step into the evolving landscape. Chinese electric vehicles are making significant inroads in Thailand, with EV sales surging by 31% to 43,000 units in the first five months of 2024, despite a 24% drop in overall vehicle sales. This influx of affordable Chinese imports has driven down new car prices by up to 20%, prompting Suzuki and Subaru to exit the Thai market by the end of 2024. Additionally, the depreciation of used cars has increased, often leaving their residual values lower than the outstanding bank debts, forcing consumers to retain their vehicles longer. This shift underscores a broader market disruption, potentially affecting other regions globally. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Innovation Pulse. If you enjoyed our insights and are eager to learn more, the Enlight Me app is just a tap away. Expand your knowledge with personalized content on over 20 diverse topics, from crypto to health and beyond, all curated to fit your interests. Download the Enlight Me app now at the Apple Store or Google Play, or visit the enlightme.ai website. Stay curious, stay enlightened. <laughs>